Welcome to Feature Fridays. My name is Guy Bartram. I'm Director of Product Marketing for our cloud providers at VMware. And today I'm joined by, again, quite a few people. So welcome, guys. We've got Garrett, uh, Osama, and Andrea. Thank you very much for joining, guys. Um, let's start with a round of introductions. So uh, Garrett, why don't you go first? Sure. Thanks, Guy. Thanks for having me again. Uh, Garrett Lear, Principal Strategist in the Cloud Provider Program at VMware. Thanks, Garrett. And uh, Osama? Hi, hi everyone. So, uh, Sama Masfari, staff architect in the CXS transformation uh, in the portfolio team in VMware. Good to meet you. Thanks, Sama. Uh, and Andrea. Hi, everyone. Uh, Andres Viero, principal architect in the CXS team and working with Osama and Garrett. And I'm very pleased to be invited uh, uh, in this call. Thank you, Guy. Uh, no problem, man. Well, listen, thank you guys for your time today. And we've got an interesting um, item to discuss today, the multi-cloud uh, adoption framework and some of the utilities that are available and capabilities that we have for partners to, to help have that conversation, uh, either with customers or as VMware helping them as well with their application maturity and a multi-cloud adoption um, solutions. Um, so we've seen in the last couple of years quite an expansion of, of multi-cloud portfolio from VMware. And really what we're trying to do is help our cloud providers go to market more effectively and understand you know, how they can use the multi-cloud uh, solutions with their customers. So um, Andrea, why don't you take us through, what is the multi-cloud um, uh, application framework that you guys have got and how does it work? How does it hang together? Yeah, yeah, the, the multi-cloud adoption framework. Um, uh, as you say, the guy in the time, over the time, VMware has different framework and we uh, started to uh, make a very common um, uh, framework across the different uh, uh, content that we have from partners, from our sellers. And uh, is what we call now an outcome focus approach. So what, what we are saying here is that uh, there is a common path, right? So everyone, every time that you engage with a customer, we engage with the customer, we start from the business and we try to understand what the customer wants to achieve from the uh, objectives. And that's where the maturity assessment, the step number one, um, is the starting point. And that's where we started to, to work with Garrett and the tool that has been uh, online for a, for a while. Mm -hmm. And then we moved uh, into the executive workshop where basically out of the, um, uh, out of the, uh, the business needs and out of the tool of the assessment, we can understand uh, what the customer needs and we can help the customer to um, explain uh, to the stakeholder what will be the, the value of continuing digging into the discussion. The business strategy then is typically uh, how do you uh, execute on the uh, business outcome? So how what will be the strategy? And we realize that there are typically two approaches. There is a, a strategic approach where you draw a huge uh, strategy that can be also multi-years, but mm -hmm. also re we recognize that some customer may be looking for a uh, tactical or like use case driven uh, strategy that can be as simple as migrating to the cloud to get as soon as possible the benefit, the benefit of consuming those different clouds that uh, uh, are available. Uh, or making a disaster recovery or creating a cloud VDI for a user, right? So there are very specific cloud use cases that we identify. And of course, to implement all of that, uh, customers and partners uh, are building a reference architecture and best practice. So with the well-architected framework, Osama, we can dig, uh, dig a little bit more on that. We created a set of guidelines and principles to implement those architectures across the different clouds, across the different use cases. And then the step number five is where basically you are you are um, ready to not only implement, but make sure that you keep tracking of the KPI and the success metric that are connected to the step number one. So even if those are step from one to five, it's actually a circle that, you know, whatever you implement is connected to what has been the, the origin, what was the, the why that created that uh, motivation from the customer. So you can connect actual metrics into the success of the implementation. Got it. So this uh, this framework actually ca captures quite well the the kind of the life cycle from initial inception and conversations around you know uh, how is your business uh, able to 
uh, adopt cloud and how and what type of changes would you need? Where are your strengths? Where are your weaknesses? All the way through to that implementation. And like you say, I mean, KPIs, KPIs are super important to capture and you know, provide feedback to your business on the, the status of your um, your journey into you know whichever cloud you're going to. Um, okay, thanks, Andrea. So, uh, Garrett, let's talk about the the maturity assessment tool. I mean, this has been around for I think about a year or so now, right? But there's been some really cool updates recently. Do you want to talk us through that? Yeah, sure. So, as as Andrea said, I mean, every every cloud journey for for customers. Whether that's you know moving to a VMware-based public cloud or native public cloud, or of course to one of our many VMware cloud provider partner clouds, always needs to start with an assessment of, of where that customer is today, right? Mm -hmm. Across the different dimensions of the business and and really across everything they're doing, right? So we need to understand what is their business strategy, what is their um their governance model, all the way to the technical situation that they're in regarding infrastructure management, application modernization, security, and so on. Yeah. Um, and, and this is really what we have built into this uh MCAM, so the multi-cloud uh and app maturity model that you can see here in screenshots. And I can also jump to a to a live demo in a in a minute. So we've we've had a quite um you know successful session on that I think a year ago and um I'm, I'm sure we're going to share that link in the in the show notes and since then um we've really worked closely with uh Osama and Andrea amongst others to to make sure that the tool is very aligned with the overarching um multi cloud adoption framework that Andrea just presented to us. So we've we've changed a couple of the questions. We've added uh, a new dimension of questions around security operations and compliance, so that we really you know gather all the aspects that are important to uh, to customers, and then you know have a solid understanding of where they stand, where they want to be, and then can really hand off to the next um, part in the process, which is then you know the executive workshop, the business strategy discussions, and then the implementation via the uh, well architected framework. So um, do you want me to, to share the, the tool quickly? Yeah, go for it. That'd be great to have a, a quick walk around the tool. Um, and yeah, the link is in the description for this. Uh, it is available to anyone, um, yeah. all of our partners. And the advice here is to, for a partner to use this with customers, right? To sit down, have the conversation with customers, get the feedback from the customers. So the partner really knows where they stand, but also the customer then can recognize areas where they need to improve or, or um, what, what particular um, strengths and weaknesses they may have in particular uh, domains of experience. Yeah, that's exactly right. So, so all the experience that, you know, me and my team and, you know, many other folks at VMware have when it comes to successfully executing and building a multi-cloud journey has really flown into that tour. So we want to make that available for our partners uh, to use in their customer engagements and just, you know, steer the conversation and, and the projects more, you know, more, more easily, right? So just a quick re recap of what the tool looks like because we have an extensive session on that already. Uh, first thing we added is, you know, multi-language support. So this is now not just in English, but in other languages as well, which, you know, makes adoption a bit easier. And then really... This front page is what what you know our partners or customers get presented with when they you know log into that that URL. So no registration or fee or anything required. It's free, available for everyone. And really, what we what we want the partner or the customer to do is you know walk through these now seven different dimensions and basically look at the questions that we have in here. So we're asking about various aspects of the strategy of the organization of the technology that is being used, and really have the customer, you know, in with support from the partner, select where they stand today, right? So we have different levels of maturity. We have a description of what that means. And then also select where they aspire to be, right? In the next couple of months or quarters. So this goes, you know, for five questions per section. And as you can see, we have an additional section that we added since we last spoke, guy, which is security controls, operations, and compliance. So this will probably take, I don't know, 30, 60 minutes, maybe a bit longer if we have a very, you know, intense discussion with, with the customer or if we need to gather more information from additional teams. But then at the end, the, the tool really calculates the gap, right? So how much of an effort um, would the customer have to move from where they are today to where they want to be? 
And we can see you know, more details on that in, in the spider web diagram here. So easily identifying the largest gap and you know the, the, the lowest or highest maturity. And we also have a heat map. So looking at you know, each specific question and you know, what areas are the ones that need the most attention. Right. So this really gives us you know, an, an, an instant overview of, of where the partner stands. And then the, the beautiful thing is once we have you know, then over a couple of, of engagements worked through the entire MCAV uh, methodology and we fulfilled all the steps from one to five, including implementation, we can come back to that tool and you know, change the current state and observe whether we made the right changes and whether we have actually gotten closer to the, uh, to the goal that uh, the customer has. And this is all available, as I said, for, for partners, so a really important tool for them to drive the multi-cloud um, discussions with their customers. And um, just, uh, just so I know, and, and um, obviously people watching uh, know, so when you've done that initial conversation with the customer and you've got your report here, you can download that as a, a PDF, um, but then you've got the ability to import and export. So that effectively takes that initial conversation, the output here, exports it to a file, and then when you come back later, you can then just re-import it and say, right, this is where you were, this is now where you are. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So we want to make sure that we don't lose any any state in that tool. So we just or the partner would just make an export once the first you know assessment is done, mm -hmm. and then you know after implementing uh, the first set of set of actions regarding multi clouds, we just come back, re-import the file, so it jumps back to that state, and we can walk through those questions again and just update um, yeah. the current situation. So it's a really iterative approach here. Yeah. This is this is great, and I think it's something that you know when the conversation goes to cloud, it can rap rapidly, um, you know, go down a path of technical um, mm -hmm. rather than business focus and specifically what each department that's going to be involved in the actual service consumption and for service monitoring, service billing, et cetera. It's, it's, it covers a broad span of the business. And what this, what I like particularly about this is it enables you to have that conversation at all different levels of the business. Um, to ensure that you know you're not missing something in in terms of your due diligence you do with the, with the customer. Yeah, that's that's exactly what we wanted to achieve with the tool, right? Because what we learned from the field is, you know, in in many instances, customers may have a cloud first strategy, right, dictated by the the, the C levels of the organization, but they don't really have the skills or the tools or the the platforms to actually execute on that strategy, right? Yeah. And then in, in other instances, you know, customers may already be heavily invested in the cloud because of, you know, shadow IT or teams doing this by themselves, but they don't have the government's frameworks and tools that are required to actually make this right, like a center of excellence or actual financial management of, of the cloud environments. So mm -hmm. we really make sure that we're covering all layers of the organization because that's really what's needed to, to make a cloud journey successful at the end of the day. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, thanks, Garrett. So, um, Andrea, so we've done kind of phase one now, which is the the app maturity assessment. What now happens for kind of the next stage in the framework? Yeah, so that, uh, what what Gary showed is uh, is really useful, uh, not only because I had the customer, as you say, to understand where they are and where they want to go. But it's also important for uh, customers that, um, uh, or even partners that are engaging with customer and they want to show that there is a need for implementing a business strategy and engage deeper with the different departments that they have done the assessment with, right? So uh, that means uh, building a business strategy for the next step. So the output of the tool can be really useful to do an executive presentation. Uh, we have uh, written a white paper of the, the key topic that need to be discussed in an executive presentation. So the executive presentation is just a 30 minute delivery to the stakeholder of the company to explain why there is a need for, for investment, not only from money perspective, and meaning from the time perspective, right? That you need to go deeper to understand what capability are needed to be improved or need to be implemented. Then the next step is actually engage with professional services or pre-sales multi-cloud multi architect or our advisory team or with the partners and draw the business strategy. And again, as I mentioned earlier, the business strategy can be a long-term strategy mm -hmm. connected with the smaller tactical uh, steps, right? That brings 
of course, align with the long-term strategy, but the tactical help the customer to gain and show there is a value over the journey, right? So it's an incremental value added of steps that we want to show to the customer. And that's where the business strategy had the customer to, um, to define those, um, those paths. And, and when, of course, yeah. Sorry, when, you, when you've got obviously a, a business wanting to go into a multi-cloud strategy, um, there's going to be a lots of different uh, competing priorities within the business. Exactly, yeah. How do you um, manage and prioritize across these tactical goals? Yeah, that's, a, that's a, of course, a, is a challenging. So what, what we do is um, uh, creating, a, doing a workshop with the, uh, different uh, uh, teams and business unit of the customer. Mm -hmm. And we have different methodology, but mainly is about conversation, right? And the slide that I'm showing you is just an example of having the people with the specific topic. So let's say that you are engaging with... Uh, uh, with IT department or the security team, and you already receive the you know the, the business objectives, and you know what are the business outcome that the business is expecting. But you have to discuss those with the different BUs in your organization, mm -hmm. and align to the actual problem that exists and the prioritization. So we do a, a workshop. In the past, was live during the uh, this pandemic time frame. It was done um, uh, on a on a Zoom sessions through Miroboard or any other tools. But the idea is to have those people interact to be, you know, without being influenced by the classic role of, oh, is my manager, I don't want to show them, uh, uh, you know. And so everyone is at the same level, everyone can contribute in terms of what are the priority of the company, if uh, uh, which, which problem addressing which uh, um, outcomes, and what type of capability are needed to implement the, the strategy that has been designed. So it's really a what we call like uh, brainstorming sessions where everyone is using stickers uh, virtually or physically and att attaching priority to those. After those priority has been defined and capability has been created, we go uh, on, a, on a two, uh, two steps. The first one can be the strategic journey as I was mentioning before. And for that, we use what we call the competency model, right? So we have already a couple of models that we describe it where the set of competency can be, um, can be used to map to the requirements of the business and draw um, a journey across uh, those, um, those boxes, right? So you can be, for example, uh, if the customer has capability in, in that space, let's say that is in a private cloud and they want to move to the, to the multi-cloud, what we do is uh, understanding what are the existing capability in that competency model and we identify what are the capability and the gaps missing to move into the multi-cloud space, for example, right? That could be one, one thing. But multi-cloud also can be any wearable space. So again, you may have capabilities in the workspace management and you want to improve your, uh, your endpoint protection or your security posture. So you have to develop additional capabilities, right? And so we discuss, after the workshop, we discuss what are the existing capability in a very um, lower details and then we map those capabilities into the journey that need to be done. In other cases, we may realize the customer are more also um, on top of the strategic journey. They are more also willing to implement a, a short case uh, uh, specific. So let's say they are right. They have a very strict mandate from the CXO to do a migration to the cloud or implementing a disaster recovery solution. So again. If that is the, the short-term uh, meaning, so we can adapt the journey map to prioritize what is the, the most uh, um, high priority step that needs to be done inside the strategic journey, right? So we don't forget that there is a strategic journey, but we realize that to realize as soon as possible the, uh, the value that customer is looking for, we address the, the short uh, use case journey, the tactical uh, uh, use case from the customer. So that's basically the step three. And then, yeah, and then from step four uh, is where the actual uh, technology is starting to, to chime in, where we're starting to implement the solution. And probably Osama can, can talk about that a little bit more. Yeah, I think that, that's, uh, that's cool. I think one of the, the really important things to, to remember is that that strategic journey to cloud is not a journey of like months. It's a journey of years, typically. Yeah, um, and, and vice versa, use case journey are like, more yearly or six months bounded, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And a lot can happen in that time frame, particularly you know now uh, with state of economy and and um, 
you know how different customers and partners are doing um so having those tactical goals is really key to get one to get some quick wins right to show the organization some results and two to pro provide confirmation of the strategy um even if it is uh, you know, a simple migration of a particular subset of VMs or a department, it's showing results because that then gets you buy-in at the higher levels to proceed to the next kind of tactical goal and next tactical goals and next tactical goals. And, you know, as new technologies get introduced into cloud and as um, customers go through their journey, their end strategy will change. It will considerably, you know, morph over time as more things become apparent, uh, more experience with the technologies is gained, and as new technologies themselves are released that may affect and have uh, uh, an importance to that partner. Absolutely. So, Sama, let's uh, talk through stage, stage, stage four then. Yeah, I, I mean, just, just before we, we transition to stage four, I just want to quickly bring up a point here, with it, which is, you know, for, for a lot of partners, and uh, I, I previously worked in uh, in the channel for a number of partners in the UK, and I'm conscious of the fact that we tend to, from my experience, we tend to skip the first three phases and jump in into the pre-sales technical discussion around technologies and products and use cases. Yeah. And, you know, for, for a lot of partners uh, listening in, from their point of view, that conversation might be quite a new you know, initiative to start to lead with customers, to start to look into what their outcomes are and what the goals and then mapping those backwards into use cases. Because from the research we've done, you know, listening in to our customers, one of the biggest or the most top challenges for multi-cloud adoption has been having a uh, an executive mandate, having that kind of um, uh, uh, sponsorship across the organization to unite together as one and, and, and to define a single and a comprehensive multi-cloud strategy that includes all parts of the business and all lines of business, right? So in order to go back into those early stages of phases one, two, and three, as much as it might seem like, you know, um, not necessarily aligned with creating high-level designs and diving into technology, there's a lot of value in this because we tend to circle back into that you know, as, as we progress into the latter parts of the sales engagement cycle, and particularly closer to closing a deal and perhaps in a competitive environment, the first three phases becomes the main differentiator between your proposal and another partner's proposal, because it tends to be which one is more aligned to our business outcomes, which one is going to be um, our best investment, thinking long-term, particularly in our direction of travel, uh, with cloud. So, um, yeah, I, I definitely double down on, on, on the need for the first three steps. But, but again, the from my point of view, the beauty with the multi-cloud adoption framework is that it could be consumed um, in, in, in different ways. And it was designed with flexibility in, in mind in the sense that you can consume it in one of two ways. You can consume it as a taster menu, so where you are served with pretty much the five dishes and, and you have a prescriptive uh, rollout, you know, sequentially going through the first assessment, moving on into the executive workshop and so on, so on, all the way to implementation of metrics. That, that could be one way to consume it. But equally, you have the a la carte approach. So you can pick and choose which of the modules or which of the phases are more appropriate to your uh, level of maturity as a business, right? So I've, I've had experience with partners that perhaps have already developed their own approach and, and way of engaging with customers when it comes to strategy and, and, and assessing their needs and so on. And therefore, phases one and two and three could be perhaps redundant to a certain extent. But then equally on the other side, there are some partners that perhaps are still in the phases and emerging uh, space that would probably get a lot of value from the first three phases before diving into the technicalities of the well architect framework, which is step four. Um, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, coming back to those one, two, and three um, aligns you better with the customer and also will ultimately expose more business to you because as you understand more of their um, more of their business in the first round, you know, may start down the route of some tactical goals. 
Um, exactly. Unless you re-engage all those departments on a regular basis, you're not going to know how their priorities are changing um, and how they are potentially looking for different solutions. So becoming integrated with the business itself as the, the delivery mechanism for these services is, is key to really um, establishing a, a decent revenue um, a forecast across the whole term of the engagement. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, move, just move one on. thought to, sorry, just one thought to add. Uh, I think what, what Osama said is it's super important that we have, you know, some partners that already have everything it takes to fulfill these, these steps, one, two, three, maybe four yeah. as well. Whereas other partners don't don't have that that skill set or that that muscle yet, right? And that is also something that we had incorporated into the MCAM model right from the beginning. So you know the output of of the initial MCAM assessment is a report that is very actionable and tells the partner what to do next with their customers. And that's obviously by default all aligned with the broader um, multi cloud adoption framework, right? However, if that partner already has that capabilities and can deliver that phase one, two, three in a different way, they can customize that report to now you'll build in your, your own services, build in their own capabilities, and just really adjust the whole journey to, to the way that they would execute such a cloud journey with their customers. So there's really full flexibility for, for any kind of uh, maturity that we have in the partner's organization and for any capability that they can bring to the party as well. Yeah, you, you raise a really good point there, Garrett, and uh, it, it's definitely kind of just worth reiterating that the the tool itself, you know, we're not trying to teach a, a partner how to sell here, you know, they've already been managing their own um, business for a long time, but this is going to help them get more uh, integrated into the customer business and understanding customer business, but also, like you say, pick and choose what you, what you like from the framework and fill in the um, the multi cloud assessment tool, the output of that with your own services and your own value that you can bring if you already have it. Okay. Um. So yeah. So I guess just moving on to the fourth step, which is the VMware Cloud Well Architected Framework. Now, this was a beast of an initiative internally within VMware for us to all unite and collaborate across business groups to create a single source of truth, you know, a single point of reference for partners and customers and internal stakeholders. You know, when it comes to multi-cloud architecture, designs, best practices, um, different options and capabilities, features, and, and the list goes on, where do you start from? You know, if you were a partner and you were engaged in an opportunity or you wanted to look into architecting a new multi-cloud environment, where, where, where do you start from in terms of your best practices? Where do you start from in terms of the key considerations that should be pulled in prior to build or preparation or operation or, and so on? And so the whole idea with the v, uh, VMware Cloud Well Architected Framework is to create that single point of view that gives you the ability now to uh, dive into five elements, five dimensions within the framework. We have the plan, the build, the operate, the secure, modernize, um, all together combined as the five pillars of the VMware Cloud Well Architected Framework. So very, very high level. Uh, the plan build, the plan pillar uh, takes into consideration the organizational readiness uh, that should go into this kind of transformational journey. So before you begin the initiative, what should, you know, what kinds of considerations should you look into um, in terms of, as we mentioned, the, the, the third step, you know, send, um, getting the executive sponsorship um, and then sort of going into the actual planning and preparation for your multi-cloud journey in the sense that, you know, when you start to think about SDEC, software defined data centers, and building those in one of the public cloud environments, what are those considerations that you should be taking into account prior to the uh, initialization? So, uh, IP addressing, uh, management, uh, the management infrastructure, networking, and, and its integration into infrastructure services, the location of infrastructure services, and its um, different options that you can have, whether you were to retain your infrastructure services on premises, perhaps as part of a hybrid cloud or even move them across along with the workloads into the public cloud. So there's lots of considerations 
to also go into the migration planning and the ways and the tools that you can leverage to you know facilitate that whole uh, journey. The build looks into the um, essentially the landing zone. You know when you when you talk about any of the hyperscalers uh, and and their VMware cloud implementation, there's a lot of preparation and planning that needs to go beforehand to uh, create the landing zone that would integrate into the VMware environment, right? So when we talk about um, setting up the accounts, resources, folders, um, your uh, integration between the hyperscaler and its native services into the VMware Cloud SDVC, those are types of considerations that we would call out in the plan and the build, as well as the way for you to start to um, spin up their SDVC, be it through the, um, the, the, the manual method using the cloud services portal or the actual portal of the hyperscaler, or even perhaps using an automation method um, using um, our own VMware Cloud APIs. The secure, obviously security is a top priority and it should be for every partner or every person that's looking to implement a solution in the cloud. And so we go through the uh, the shared responsibility model and the different um, you know demarcation points between the consumer of the service versus the, uh, the 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 software owner or versus the hyperscaler the cloud provider um, uh, on that side. And then we also talk about the best practices for um, the NSX security capabilities and the feature which are natively integrated into the solution. So. East-West micro-segmentation with NSX is a top um, priority for a lot of customers because it's built into the in, into this uh, platform, right? Um, so there's no additional licensing in that sense. You know, you, you have NSX, you have its um, um, firewalling capability up to a level four as included within the solution. But obviously you do have the capabilities now to include up to level seven firewalling with the advanced uh, protection. And then for modernized, um, you know, this is a key topic for us because when we talk about VMware Cloud, we we don't necessarily want to pigeonhole a conversation into rehosting, right? Which is one of the five R's uh, that we advocate for. So rehosting tends to be yes, it's the migration of the workloads using hybrid cloud extension, the HCX tool, um, which is the workload mobility tool to mop to, to lift and shift your workloads. But there's also a replatforming conversation that should take into uh, should, should, should take place in the modernized pillar and give you uh, an idea of, to, of the capabilities that we have with Tanzu that you can easily leverage as part of the vSphere platform in VMware Cloud environment, in, in the VMware Cloud environments. And so what we're trying to do here is trying to move the conversation away from an or, i.e., you know, you rehost or you replatform. And we're trying to bring the two together as part of an and conversation. So perhaps to look into how you could um you know assess your workflows in the early phases and and try and identify those early candidates that could easily be re-platformed as well as re-hosted as you know through that journey and then the operate pillar is the last one which is um essentially looking into day two operations so um you know you've you've created your environment you've migrated your workloads what does life look like in the cloud, what does the operational model encompass in terms of the roles, responsibilities, uh, and where does the demarcation point uh, 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 sit between things like lifecycle policy, the lifecycle software management, and your own operational team? You know, what are the roles of the responsibilities of your ops teams? Um, how should they be able to monitor, to log, to um, be able to stay on top of this environment which is hosting your mission critical workloads? Yeah, I think um, a couple of points there. So um, for the modernized piece, I completely agree with you. And I think one of the, the biggest benefits that VMware brings to the equation is the ability to have your, um, sometimes known as legacy, but I'm going to call them heritage because it sounds a bit nicer. Your heritage kind of workloads coexist with your, your modernized strategy and your modern, modern platforms. And I think that's you know, the future of multi-cloud is that coexistence because not everything's going to, you know, modernize straight away. It's going to need to um, stay as it is. Um, and also just an observation, this seems to be uh, much more tuned, this Will Architecture framework to um, the VMware uh, hyperscale platform supported like VMware Cloud on AWS, uh, VMware Cloud on um, Google 
cloud vmware engine uh, all of the rest of them is is that um i mean as it stands is that the can the the, you hit the case out of the box with this framework yeah so um i could share my screen and show you the the tech zone website um where we actually have this um documented um so this is so the, the well-architected framework from VMware is um, is publicly available using uh, on the vmc.techzone.vmware.com website. Um, so that's that's available to all of the partners, and you can select your flavor of VMware Cloud uh, using the Cloud Infrastructure Services drop-down list. Uh, selected VMC on AWS, just as an example here, mm -hmm. but you can see that you have this concept of the pillars, the five pillars, and the adjacent modules, right? Um, and the idea here is that each of these modules will uh, allow you to drill into a specific topic, whether it's spend management, the shared responsibility model I mentioned earlier on, or the organizational planning that should be considered, um, particularly in the early phases of the journey. Um, and then as you kind of move across each of these pillars, you can see that the level of information here is, um, starts to dive in a little bit deeper in, in correspondence to the phase. And, for me, you know, for someone that's um, worked in in industry for a number of years, and, and partners and so on, I remember the days when we'd be looking at design a VMware cloud in a VMware cloud in AWS environment, and the content was fairly sporadic. You know, it was fragmented, and um, it was kind of going on the basis of what you can um, get hold of and partner connect, partner central, as it was called back then. Uh, and then obviously experience and 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 you, your own um, uh, capability of delivering a solution. And so to look at where we are now, this is almost like the evolution of um, going from a uh, an, uh, an uh, I'll use this analogy, but it's going from a point where we're almost cooking up this recipe uh, in a different way every time in a different kitchen, whereas now we have this book of guidance a book of principles that will try and move you and deviate you away from these uh, weeds and away from all the complexities and time consuming uh, mistakes that you might have to go back and remediate into this path of success and it's not as prescriptive as the vmware validated designs but it's almost on that kind of analogy whereby we're trying to bring consistency here to all of our customers in terms of best practices and all of the methodologies that we've developed over Many many years of operating the um, of building these solutions. Yeah, um, I think there's one, so, one thing to add while we are. Oh, oh, go ahead, guy. Sorry. Oh, just just so just getting this straight in my mind, the multi cloud application maturity assessment tool. That's kind of an open uh, platform for really any kind of cloud endpoint and program that you're looking to to achieve. Whereas the well-architected framework is aligned to VMware cloud endpoints, which are, you know, our prescriptive solutions, which run on these hyperscalers. So we can get slightly more specific about how we're addressing these different areas. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Basically is the, you know, the, the difference between defining the business strategy, defining the, the cloud journey as a business side, and then once you understand the business, you go into the architecture mode, architectural mode, and you go deep in the specific uh, product implementation. In that case, it's like the solution implementation in the specific hyperscaler yeah. that you needed. And so I think what's, what's important, to, to, sorry, uh, no, no, go what's on. important to understand for, for our partners. I mean, obviously the well-architected framework is, is a great toolbox for all of our MSP partners that mm. are you know successfully building business on VMware Cloud and AWS. Or you know on Azure VMware solutions, Google Cloud VMware Engine, and and so on, right? I think that's that's pretty obvious that this is really the toolbox to use when it comes to implementing those customer uh, environment as part of the MSP business. But also a lot of questions that we get uh, from partners that are you know additionally or or exclusively building their own cloud on the VCDP platform with VCD and in their own data center is, okay, how do I give my customers guidance on how to use that? Do I have all the operational procedures in place? Have I, how do I secure this? How do I you know, document all of that? And in my mind, the well-architected framework is, is really a great tool to give those partners guidance on what they need to build in terms exactly. of you know, their own version of a well-architected framework, right? Yeah, yeah that's spot on. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's individual, right? They can you know choose parts of what we already have, customize it a little bit to their environment, 
and then look at you know what do i actually need to give my customers guidance on how to leverage or you know make the most out of my vcpp data center based cloud so it really works in both worlds in my mind yeah that's exactly the intent uh, behind the mcaf and the and the well the framework is is to write down the the methodology and the the principle that guide the contents not the content itself right so every partners will be able to build their own and be different and differentiate themselves also customer if they want to go through the entire uh mcaf and wow they, they can do it right so it's like open sourcing our brain and <laughs> making it available for anyone right and what is also good about those contents is that are not built by just one single team in vmware so it's, it's a full collaboration between uh, um, BUs that are uh, the, the product BUs that created the hyperscalers, professional services where me and Osama are, and multi-cloud uh, uh, architects like Garrett and Guy. So there are a lot of collaboration between different uh, uh, expertise in, in the team. And so probably that's one of the uniqueness uh, that has been done so far uh, from my perspective. Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, so I, I see this as really innovating right and that's kind of what i was asking so garrett your point is absolutely kind of key here and and uh you know what are, what you've just said andrea in terms of um the guidance and the principles around this can be applied to you know a partner's cloud on premise and it's actually a worthwhile investment if you kind of look at the the framework and try and replicate this with your own kind of environment, with your own running and operational guides, with your own kind of build guides, whatever it might be, um, because you're aligned to the VMA portfolio. So the technologies are gonna be pretty much the same. Uh, certainly the outcomes of lots of technologies are gonna be the same. Um, you'll just need to do some, some tuning to your specific environment, you know, whatever user access will be different, for example, uh, different right. UIs, et cetera, and maybe different technologies in play. Um, but certainly addressing those core things around, you know, modernizing your applications. I mean, that's the key goal um, for lots of, of multi-cloud cloud strategies today. So, yeah, okay. So that makes a lot of sense to me then. So I was thinking for a, mi a minute, oh, this only applies to kind of VMware cloud endpoints, but actually applies to any kind of VMware cloud, yeah. including partner clouds. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost a framework within a framework. Yeah, so sort of. where well active the framework is is step four of the MCAF. Um, as we mentioned, right, it's, it's almost like an a la carte menu. So if you've already developed your own way of, uh, of, of leading engagements through the first three steps, then you can just pick and choose the fourth, which i.e. the VMware well architected framework as your starting point in that engagement. Um, yeah. And then obviously moving on to implementation and, and, and metrics, you know, to make sure that you're, you're capturing those KPIs and re going back into that the early discussions and, and to see where you're at in terms of your gap analysis. Yeah, I guess now's the time to move on to that kind of final stage that you had, Andrea, on your initial kind of diagram. If we come up out of the uh, the well-architected framework now into the, um, the overall framework, um, that operate piece. Yeah, so what do you want to just talk through some of the aspects of this? Yeah, so um, again, the uh, the framework itself provides a series of guidelines. So we also published a white paper that explain, for example, not only the needs to measure the, uh, the business uh, and the KPIs, but also we come up with some example of KPIs that we, uh, we have seen as a recurrent um, in terms of, um, for example, the business vision, the integration the customer has, the optimization opportunity and the security of, of the cloud, right? So we have uh, in, in the next release of the white paper that will be published probably in a, in a week, uh, we are working on it. It will be a, a full extent of example of KPI that are real life example that we collected from um, uh, different customer engagement. And we provide some example. And the key point is that those KPI are... Um, uh, you know, guidance for um, customer to understand where they are after they implemented all of those uh, configuration, all of those uh, uh, cloud, and they are on the journey. How they are sure that they are on the correct path, right? So, if for example, the business outcome was like, oh, I want to reduce my um, incident incident uh, um, 
frequency to like uh, less than one security uh, incident per year, right? Uh, and now maybe they have 10. So you have to measure before and after. That's another consideration that is important. So even before starting the journey, you want to make sure that you're already measuring the things that you want to uh, improve over the time, right? So how do you know <laughs> that you are improving if you, don't, if you are not measuring something, right? So that's the key of the step five. Again, that's where the step five is connected with the step one, because uh, what is uh, in the guideline is saying that you, you don't have to start measuring only after, right? And you have to start to think about what you want to measure when everything is, is done, even before. So you can understand where you were, where you were and where you're going, right? And that's, for example, the tool that Gary provides also is, is a good example of measuring stuff because the five level provide you, even if it's like um, approximation, of course, but give you a set of uh, things that need to be measured. If you can measure it, you can improve it. If you, if you don't measure it, you will never be able to, to understand if you are improving it or you are moving in the right direction, right? That's the, the basic concept of uh, optimization and uh, adoption. And, and this is the thing, right? Just, just to add on to that point is that step five tends to be a quite often forgotten point you know you tend to go through the early preparation you go through the actual deployment the, the transition and the operational um operationalization part and then you seem to almost walk away from the customer and that might have perhaps worked in a different model but in a consumption-based environment um you know being able to iteratively go back with the customer and examine your level of success and, 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 and your, almost your integrity of the work you've completed does add a lot of credibility and builds trust for that consumption to continue moving on into the future. Mm -hmm. So um, there's, there's a lot of uh, importance on step five as, as much as, uh, you know, again, it might come across as a completely new step for, uh, for, for, for the certain partners. Yeah, yeah. In this slide, is, I just want to show that, of course, VMware has their own matrix. We 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 track with the customer. Uh, we have Success 360 that track, for example, uh, how the customer is moving toward the uh, the success plan they are implemented with us, or uh, the consumption of the number of hosts they are creating. Those are just matrix that our team with the customer success team has created for specific customer. But that doesn't mean that the framework. Uh, is telling partners to create their own metrics. So if, if a customer is joining a partner specific cloud, like a sovereign cloud or a custom implemented cloud from a partners, the partners has the guideline to implement the matrix the way they want. But as far as they implement the matrix, uh, that's what the framework say, right? So the matrix dictate the set of matrix that need to be created. It doesn't specify exactly which one, because of course we know that there are differences, but the guidelines are written in the framework. So I think, again, that's, Going back to the point that of the framework to give the freedom of the implementation case by case, but at the same time providing a very good guidelines to, so everyone is adopting the same methodology and is, there is this uh, consistency across multiple ways of VMware clouds. Yeah, and uh, just just so everyone watching kind of knows then, the, the maturity assessment that's um, obviously available the workshops and the business strategy, that's something you guys provide as um, as services to, to to partners. Is that something that I'm correct? Or is there actually collateral where a partner can go and get and use? It's also, yeah, it's also uh, partners can get those collaterals and they can use those collaterals with uh, with our customers. And also customer can, uh, can get access to um, those uh, use case uh, uh, driven journey maps as, as they call through the tech, uh, in tech zone. So in tech zone, we published, uh, for example, the cloud migration path, how it looks like, yeah. or the disaster recovery path, how it looks like. Of course, the business strategy long-term, uh, we don't have like a set of contents for it because it will depend based on the specific customer. But the use case specific driven, yes, the, they are published, they are available. And partners are now in the process to be enabled by VMware. So we are training partners. There is this MCAP program that help also partners to be enabled on those contents. And we are publishing those contents in the partner center. So every partner will have access to those contents to, yeah, to, to learn and use those content with customers as well. Okay, brilliant. And does a partner need to be trained first to have access to this or can any partners access it today? Is it open? Uh, I think, uh, um, I think at the moment the contents are available uh, uh, through Partner Central uh, um, through the MCAP program uh, at the moment. So partners need to join the, the MCAP programs at the moment. But uh, we are looking to open up 
broadly to other partners, right? So there will be different level of access to the contents based on the type of certification, type of, you know, uh, commitment partner as with VMware. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, everything that is online, we are trying to brain dump everything. We don't want to have secret sauce in our, you know, pockets. So we want to expand and um, share as much as possible the knowledge. So we're going to publish, but the, the restriction is more because of the maturity of those contents. That's it, that's the only reason, right? We're not mm -hmm. just hiding things. We are just trying to make sure that when some contents become uh, uh, very solid, then it's going to be shared abroad, even with customer, right? Everyone can use it. When the content maybe is just uh, an innovation things that we are sharing with um, very specific uh, guidelines, we tend to have it like, trained partners so you can consume it in a proper way and not abused. Yeah. That's the yeah, only reason sense. for that. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay, Jax. Um I mean this is sounds like um there's a nice, really nice framework here that partners can use. Um starting off with the maturity assessment, but also looking at all of these steps across the um MCAF and diving into the the um, stuff on tech zone for the well-architected framework steps yeah. as well, the kind of the subset that we've got there. Um, I'll put the links in the description so you know partners can find out more. Um, but any any kind of final words for how partners should engage? Um, you know, obviously there's the links which get some access to the data. Is there any other kind of places they can engage with you, you and your team? Um, no, I, I mean, we will provide the link uh, in the in the comments below. We have a common contact point, uh, typically with their own uh, partner um, reference in VMware. We can be reached out. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so that, there's no really a single uh, email that, uh, I mean, uh, we are here, but there, we were going to share the contact in the, in the comments for sure. Yeah, for everyone. And, and we'll, we'll, we'll have much more content to release in the upcoming months. So today we have the white paper, we have the, uh, which, which has lots of lots of content at the moment. Um, but we are looking at creating a sort of almost like a delivery kit for each partner. So that will encompass um, presentations, tools, capabilities that align to each of the phases within the, um, within the uh, MCAP program. Oh, no, no, now, now that I have a good point, like if you want to talk with us and it happens that you are in Barcelona, <laughs> you can come <laughs> You can come to the CXS session on Thursday, the 8th of November from 3 p.m. to 3.45. It will be me, Osama, and Lon Chen, that is the, uh, she's the director for the, the MCAP program, mm -hmm. to talk about the session. So yeah, we are looking for uh, having everyone uh, in Barcelona. Excellent. And uh, that will be recorded, I take, and uh, available for replay as well, probably. Yeah, absolutely. Thank Great. You. Well, listen, guys, thank you so much for the information you've given today. Um, I've certainly learned something about MCAP, and, you know, I didn't realize that actually we'd grown quite a capability like this uh, behind, you know, what the only piece of information I knew was the uh, the app maturity model. So I'm very pleased to see this this framework behind it, which is great. Um, thank you very much for your time today and uh, yeah, good luck in VM Explore. Thank you. Thank you for having us right. today. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.